Chapter 5 The Gift of Gratitude Many things threaten life, which is even more ephemeral than a bubble of water full of air. How amazing is the opportunity to exhale after inhaling and to awake from sleep, says Nagarjuna. If the only prayer you said in your whole life was thank you, that would suffice. Mr. Eckhart There is no greater difference between people than between grateful and ungrateful people. R. H. Blit For each new morning with its light, for rest and shelter of the night, for health and food, for love and friends, for everything thy goodness sends, Father in heaven, we thank thee. Ralph Waldo Emerson Why be grateful? Reflect on your present blessings, of which every man has many, not on your past misfortunes, of which all men have some, by Charles Dickens. At the deepest existential level, the gift of gratitude is our resounding tribute to the universe, for all its anonymous blessings. At the interpersonal level, the gift of gratitude springs from a deep realization that our whole life depends on the kindness of others. These others could be our parents, our teachers, our friends and other people who make our daily life possible. From dawn to dusk, almost everything we do or experience depends upon the anonymous efforts of countless people, participating in a highly interdependent dance of life. In sum, all of the things that we are privileged to enjoy in our lives depend upon the kindness of others. By acknowledging and appreciating their kindness, we redeem our share in the mutual maintenance of our communal existence. Blessedness of Gratitude Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. Melody Petty The Parent of All Virtues Gratitude is not only the greatest of the virtues but the parent of all others, says Cicero. Gratitude rightly practiced, can change our orientation toward life beyond belief. It can help us become happier and more content. As you start recognizing the positive that already exists in your life, you will notice an inner shift reflected in your outer reality. You will find yourself bumping into abundance in situations and places where you least expected it or where you had previously felt a sense of lack in your life. This shift from scarcity to abundance will invariably create more opportunities to be grateful for and will slowly bring a more positive orientation to life's overall journey. Taking Gifts for Granted it is a common human tendency to take life's gifts for granted. In the insightful words of Huxley, most human beings have an almost infinite capacity for taking things for granted. We do not seem to realize how much we would crave the things we now have if we did not have them to begin with and how much we would miss what we now have if we were to lose it. Hence, the well-worn cliché, 
count your blessings. The following Hasidic story splendidly portrays the art of unconditional gratitude. Story time. Art of thanking God when bad things happen to us. Once, Schmelk of Nikolsburg asked Dov Beer of Medzrich to explain the Talmudic commandment that we should praise God for evil as much as we praise Him for good. Dov Beer said, Go to the house of study and ask my student Zusya. Schmelk went to the house of study and found Zusya emaciated, filthy, clothed in rags. Schmelk asked, How can we praise God for evil as much as we praise Him for good? I can't tell you, said Zusya, because nothing bad has ever happened to me. What is gratitude? Put simply, gratitude is the art of noticing and appreciating our gifts. According to Robert Emmons of the University of California at Davis and Michael McCulloch of Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, the word gratitude is derived from a Latin root gratia, meaning grace, graciousness or gratefulness. Dr. Alex Wood, a postgraduate researcher in the Department of Psychology, University of Warwick, defines gratitude as a life orientation towards noticing and appreciating the positive in the world. Researchers in the field of positive psychology have found that simple acts of gratitude practiced on a regular basis act as happiness boosters that contribute significantly to improved health and happiness. Gratitude boosts well-being. Emmons and McCulloch, two pioneers in the field of gratitude research, have attempted to empirically test the popular assumptions regarding the effects of grateful outlook on psychological and physical well-being. Their initial studies indicate that Gratitude plays some role in a person's sense of emotional, psychological and social well-being. They also cite a 1998 Gallup survey of American teen and adults, according to which 90% of respondents indicated that expressing gratitude helped them to feel extremely happy or somewhat happy. According to their findings, people who feel grateful are also more likely to feel loved. They also noted that gratitude promotes a positive cycle of reciprocal kindness among people. Grateful people are happier, less depressed, less stressed and more satisfied with their lives and interpersonal relationships. Stephen Topher of Kent State also found that expressing gratitude can improve levels of happiness and enhance quality of life. Dofer enlisted students from different courses to write letters expressing deep sense of gratitude to people who have positively impacted their lives. The students were asked to write one letter every two weeks over a six-week period. After each letter, students completed a survey to gauge their moods, satisfaction with life and feelings of gratitude and happiness. Topher reported, I saw their happiness increase after each letter. Meaning, the more they wrote, the better they felt. 75% of the students said they intended to continue to write similar letters even after the study was completed. This is an excellent testimony to the age-old wisdom that gratitude is double happiness because it blesses both the giver and the receiver. Liu Bomersky, a psychologist at the University of California, Riverside, in her book, The How of Happiness, a scientific approach to getting the life you want, admirably presents 
what the scientists currently understand about the causes and potential for abiding well-being. She states that 50% of happiness is determined by genetics, about 10% by things pursued in the pursuit of happiness, while the remaining 40% is determined by deliberate habits, behaviors and intentional activities such as expressing gratitude, practicing kindness, learning to forgive and cultivating optimism. Addressing the role of gratitude in happiness, Lyubomirsky observed, the expression of gratitude is a kind of meta-strategy for achieving happiness. It is wonder. It is appreciation. It is fathoming abundance. It is thanking someone in your life. It is thanking God. It is counting blessings. Counting our blessings. Let's take stock of our human endowments and blessings. For the sake of simplicity, we can divide our gratitude into three types of blessings. Number one, gratitude for the precious human birth. Number two, gratitude for the gift of wondrous nature. Number three, gratitude for the kindness of others. Gratitude for the precious human birth. To be born as a human being is a rare blessing. We seldom realize the precious rarity of our human status that is full of unique freedoms and fortunes. We mostly take it for granted as a matter of course and live as if it is going to last forever. We are so dazed with the humdrum of life and so lost in the trivial pursuits that we tend to overlook the infinite preciousness and precariousness of our existence. Rarely does it occur to us that human birth is very difficult to get and very easy to lose. The following Buddhist tale underscores the extreme rarity and supreme preciousness of human birth. A Buddhist Parable on Human Condition A story is told in a Buddhist scripture of a blind turtle who dwells in the depths of a vast ocean, coming up for air only once every hundred years. On the surface of the same ocean floats a golden yoke. When this turtle, which can come to the surface only once every hundred years, comes to the surface, can he put his head into the floating yoke even one time? asked the Buddha. The disciple answered, It's impossible. Even if it took hundreds of millions of years, or even millions of millions of years, for the turtle to be able to put its face in the hole, it would be very hard to do it. Then the Buddha said, I know everyone thinks that it is impossible. But are you sure? To be born into this world as a human is infinitely more difficult than a blind turtle putting his face into the hole of the golden yoke. Then the Buddha put some dirt into his hand, opened his hand and said, The beings who have a human body are like the dirt in my hand, a very small amount. But the beings who fail to obtain a human body are like the huge ground. A human body is the hardest to come by. You monks need to listen and think about that. This is not an empty parable from the old Buddhist scriptures, but a true representation of the human condition. It is a clarion call to take stock of our situation. Let's reflect on how rare our human birth is. As modern astronomy shows, the universe does not team up with life. It is a rare combination of conditions where life can emerge and yet more unique to allow it to develop and reach the stage of self-aware human beings. For every human form of life, 
there are billions of other life forms on this earth. Humans live on land that covers roughly 30% of the earth's surface and the mighty oceans cover the remaining 70% of earth's surface. However, the creatures that live in the ocean vastly outnumber those on land. When we compare the number of humans to the overwhelming number of other species on Earth, we come to understand why the human population is referred to as the speck of sand on a fingernail. According to reliable medical estimates, there are typically 40 million bacterial cells in a gram of soil and a million bacterial cells in a milliliter of fresh water. A few small colonies of ants can easily outnumber the entire population of human race on our globe. A New York Times magazine article expressed it even more graphically. There are more intestinal bacteria in your colon at this moment than there are human beings who have ever lived. Our primary gratitude, therefore, is for the precious human birth which is very rare and full of fortunes and freedoms. Vivek Chudamani, an eminent Hindu, draws from the text of Vedanta and emphasizes that among various living creatures on earth, being born as a human being is rare. It then goes on to highlight the great rarity of three things. And only these three, the human birth, the desire for freedom from the limitation of conditioned existence and the saving grace of sages. What makes our human birth so very unique and precious? According to the sages, it is our freedom of choice, a freedom attained only in the human condition that leads to liberation from ignorance and limitations. The sages explain that while all beings reap the fruits of their previous actions, humans initiate new actions, new karma. If we look into the nest of a bird, we may find no change at all, even after thousands of years of nest making. If that were the case with humans, we would still be living in caves. The supreme gifts of free will and creativity are uniquely human prerogatives. And these great gifts become available through a self-aware mind, which is only possible when one attains human status. And yet, alas, it is so easily lost. Human status, so hard to get, not so easy to be found? My gratitude is infinite, hard to recount. When we fail to recognize it, we verily fail to realize it. Gratitude for the wonderful gift of the human body. Let's consider the wonderful gift of the human body, an information processing marvel. Werner Gitt, a German information scientist, concurs. Without a doubt, the most complex information processing system in existence is the human body. If we take all human information processes together, that is, conscious ones, like language, information controlled, deliberate voluntary movements, and unconscious ones, like information, controlled functions of the organs, hormone system, this involves the processing of 24 times 10 bits daily. This astronomically high figure is higher by a factor of a million times greater than the total human knowledge of 18 times 10 bits stored in all the world's libraries. The rarity and preciousness of human birth cannot be established solely on the marvel of our physical body. However, many animals have equally wonderful and versatile bodies. It is the gift of free will and resultant creativity that really seems to set humans apart 
from the rest of the species. It is self-knowledge and awareness that distinguish us among all creation. George Santayana once said that, even if the universe crushes me, I am still greater than the universe because I know that I am being crushed and the universe does not know that it is crushing me. Human status is rare. Cobb DM sees the day. To be born human is a rare blessing indeed. What am I going to do with my life now that I have this precious and wonderful opportunity? In the foregoing pages, the Buddhist parable of the blind turtle was presented to underscore the extreme rarity of human birth. Let's not treat the story of the turtle merely as an amusing little fable, but allow it to act as a vivid reminder of how rare our human status is. There are many good uses to which we can put our human life. When we are conscious of its true value, we will surely wish to choose the very best way to lead it. The Buddha also taught on many occasions that human life is only as long or as short as one breath. Because if we exhale, then do not inhale. We have already died and stepped over into a new lifetime. How lucky we are! To have this precious human life, full of freedom and opportunity. Freedom to practice goodness and opportunity to have access to the teachings on self-knowledge and personal transformation. Let's reflect on the rarity of being in a place and time and circumstance in which we are presented with real opportunities of developing self-wisdom and compassion. The purpose of understanding the preciousness and rarity of our human life is to encourage us to realize the true meaning of our human existence and not squander it on trivial pursuits. We will be gravely remiss if we devaluate this infinitely precious human birth and let it slide by for the accomplishment of transient goals and ephemeral desires. Our human life is fulfilled only if we apply it to obtain self-knowledge and attain supreme happiness of enlightened living, characterized by pure motivation, unconditional gratitude, altruistic generosity, complete harmlessness, selfless service, constant mindfulness and total acceptance. This is truly seizing the day. Treasure yourself and cherish your privilege of precious human birth. Thanksgiving Day Now, what should I do for the other 364 days? Celebrating Thanksgiving Day is one of the important cultural events in most Western countries. Like Mother's Day or Father's Day, such events remind us to formally express our gratitude for life in general and for our loved ones in particular. And certainly, such celebrations bring their due share of satisfaction in their wake. However, in order to reap enduring benefits from the gift of gratitude, one has to develop an abiding orientation of gratefulness that extends itself in every aspect of our life. Without waiting for some special events to sing our gratitude, the invitation here is to develop a disposition that notices and celebrates the positive gifts available to us at all the times. The Great Art of Being Grateful A blind boy sat on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign that said, I am blind, please help. There were only a few coins in the hat. A man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the hat. He then took the sign, turned it around and wrote some words. He put the sign back so that everyone who walked by 
would see the new words. Soon, the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign came to see how things were going. The boy recognized his footsteps and asked, Were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. What he had written was, Today is a beautiful day and I cannot see it. Do you think the first sign and the second sign were saying the same thing? Of course, both signs told people that the boy was blind. But the first sign simply said, the boy was blind. The first sign simply told people to help by putting some money in the hat. The second sign told people that they were able to enjoy the beauty of the day. But the boy could not enjoy it because he was blind. The first sign simply said the boy was blind. But the second sign told people they were so lucky that they were not blind. Should we be surprised that the second sign was more effective? The moral of the story. Acknowledge and be thankful for what you have. Be creative and innovative. Think differently and positively. Gratitude for the gift of wondrous nature. On the long list of things that we take for granted, the wondrous gift of nature can perhaps be placed next to taking our human status for granted. We feel that the world has always been there for us to experience. The beauty of a sunrise or sunset, the touch of soft grass on bare feet, the perfume of a flower that blooms in our backyard, the cool ambience of a full moon. All these gifts go unnoticed or perhaps get lost amidst our daily economic grind of life. In the industrialized cities, we seldom really get to enjoy our kinship with Mother Nature. And yet, our biological clock is totally dependent on the biosphere that inhabits the space surrounding us. When we wake up in the morning, the whole world lights up for us to experience all at once. The symphony of birds singing in natural harmony is ready to entertain us at no cost or effort on our part. The plants and trees are eager to generate the life-nourishing oxygen as a part of their natural contribution to the mutual maintenance of the universe. What a rare privilege to be able to experience this world. We generally do not think in terms of paying back for the free gifts of sunshine and air that sustain our life. We cannot live even for a few minutes without the vital air we call breath. The sunshine sustains all plant life and food systems for us. When we develop a grateful disposition toward appreciating the dance of nature around us, we pay our rightful share for the services received generously and freely out of nature's bounty. Gratitude for the kindness of others. At the interpersonal level, the gift of gratitude springs from a deep realization that our whole life depends on the kindness of others. In fact, the whole universe has to participate or collaborate to make our existence possible. With due reflection, an act as simple as having breakfast could be seen as a cosmic event. Just imagine all the steps, all the people, all the agencies involved in making our breakfast happen. The earth, the water, the sun, the air that nourish the grains. The farmers who harvested the crop, the coal storage facility, the baker, the trucker who transported it to the nearest supermarket, the bagger who joyfully bagged the groceries, and so forth. 
the whole universe seemed to have conspired just to make our breakfast happen. The same is true of all the things that we get to enjoy in our lives. They depend upon the kindness of others. By acknowledging and appreciating their kindness, we get to contribute our rightful share in the mutual celebration of our social and economic life. In many wisdom traditions, it is believed that by our very birth, we incur debt to our Mother Earth, to our parents, to our teachers and to our common creator. We are indebted to the Earth for giving us all kinds of food to sustain our lives and space to walk and live. We are indebted to our parents because they are responsible for our physical birth and our upbringing. In one of his dialogues, the Buddha tells his disciples that even if one were to carry each of one's parents on both shoulders for the rest of one's life, still, one will not be able to repay the debt one owes to one's parents. We are indebted to our teachers, who are responsible for our psychological and spiritual birth. And we are indebted to our common creator for all known and unknown blessings. Keeping a Gratitude Journal Recent research on the salutary effects of gratitude upholds the practice of keeping a gratitude journal or appreciation journal on a daily basis. Lubomirsky found that taking the time to consciously count their blessings once a week significantly increased subjects' overall satisfaction with life over a period of six weeks. Whereas a control group that did not keep the happiness journal showed no such gain. The idea is to consciously notice abundance in our life. Gratitude exercises are more than just mood boosters. Emmons found these exercises to improve physical health, raise energy levels and for patients with neuromuscular diseases, relieve pain and fatigue. He further noted that the ones who benefited the most tended to elaborate more and have a wider span of things they are grateful for. The recommendations for a gratitude journal are quite simple. First, have a small notebook readily available by the bedside. Second, write five things you are grateful for each night before going to bed. These can be simple things such as family, friends, health, sunshine, nighttime, and the like. Third, throughout the day, take mental notes of happenings from the standpoint of gratitude. Number four, start each day with a positive mindset, always taking note of simple joys that life brings. Every simple act of life holds some joy. Number five, focus on the positive side of things, even in situations normally considered negative. Remember, it can always be worse. This is the best way to deal with the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Mindful moments. Five things in life to be grateful for. I invite you now to take a moment to think of five things in your life that you are grateful for. For example, your friends, your family, your job, your health, your sense of smell, touch, taste, sight and sound. The list can go on and on. Imagine what your life would be like without any of these things. Do this quite often and you will notice that your whole being is filled with gratitude. If you want to feel rich, just count all the things that you have that money can't buy. Concluding Remarks The gift of gratitude is first and foremost an expression of the true joy of just being alive. 
If you can digest your food and sleep well, says an Eastern adage, sing your gratitude to sun and ask for no other blessing. When we approach our life with a deep sense of gratitude, it turns into a privilege and ceases to be a problem or a burden. Similarly, when we recognize that the whole universe of sight and sound manifests itself as soon as we open our eyes in the morning, we realize how privileged our position happens to be. Our heart is overwhelmed with untold gratitude. Finally, at the interpersonal level, when we realize that our life depends entirely upon the kindness of others, our heart wells up with the expression of gratitude and goodwill for everyone and everything. For countless eons, I have suffered the slings of self-cherishing mind, ever living in the servitude of ego supreme, the vicious cycle of I, myself and me, failing to recognize the great kindness of others, our mother sentient beings. <laughs>